Hello, everyone. My guest today is Mark Simon. He's the co-founder of Brax, where he helps performance marketers scale, automate, and simplify native advertising. Previously, he helped e-commerce and software companies acquire customers through organic and paid search. He loves data visualization, nutrition, and everything outdoors, which is his excuse for taking his kids on all kinds of crazy adventures. Mark, are you ready to take us to the top? I'm ready. Let's do it, Nathan. All right. You told me before you've listened, so you know what you're in for, right? I do. All right, good. Tell us about Brax. What do you guys do and how do you make money? Sure. So we basically work with all the native ad networks out there. So you can, the core things is if you've ever created ads, you have to create them the same ad like a hundred times in any ad network. So what our system does, you create it once and you can send it out to all the, the native ad networks. So specifically outbreak to Google rev content, those guys. Mm -hmm. And walk me through the, the revenue model. Is it a SaaS play here? Or is it just a percentage of volume through you that you're taking? Sure. So it is a SaaS play. We charge people on a monthly or annual subscription. Um, and the way we kind of break that subscription down, the, the value metric is a media spend. Got it. So, so there's kind of, kind of there's kind of here. there's kind of buckets, right? If less than a hundred grand per month, you're going to pay us, you know, a hundred bucks a month. If you're spending a million per month, you're going to pay us a grand per month, something like that. Uh, exactly. Yes. I see. So okay. So you know the numbers. What's the average customer paying you per month? Would you say? Yeah. So on average, it's about four hundred dollars. Um, is kind of the average, the, the entry level right now, kind of starting price is 200, okay. um, a month. Now, if they do it, we have a pretty aggressive, we push people to an annual plan. So there's a pretty aggressive discount. Uh, I don't want to say it on the air in case it changes, yeah. but th th we push people to a 12 month plan for that's great. Now give me, if someone's paying you 400 bucks a month, what does that mean in terms of how much they're spending with you per month typically? Uh, sure. Yeah. So if they're spending 400, um, you know, they're probably, um, they're definitely over 50 K a month in spend, you yeah. know, maybe, you know, up to around 50 to hundred K a month. In okay. Month. Got it. That's helpful to understand. The reason I ask you, I mean, so that's way cheaper. There's a lot of these agencies that'll charge you 10, 20% of ad spend. You're, you know, charging 400 on 50 grand, right? Which is less than one. What is that? Less than 1%, right? Or less than, Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, exactly. So we're, we're under a percentage point, um, yeah. you know, about a third of a percentage point is about at scale what we do. So, so the lower level plans, it's anywhere from, um, a 10th of a percent. So all the way up to, um, a little less than a, yep. and walk 1% or down. So it's, it starts at about 1% if, you know, our $200 a month plan is for 25 K. So, yep. and Mark, how many customers are you serving today? Uh, 92 paying customers. 92. Got it. So that's about 36 grand a month at 400, right? Yeah. It's a little higher than that. That's why it's a, you know, we're at 40 K MRR currently. Okay. And, and what were you at about a year ago? Uh, so, uh, uh it's almost a hundred percent growth. When we look at it, we kind of look at it annual revenue and, and run rates there. So, yep. um, you know, we're on track this year to probably grow anywhere from 75 to hundred percent. Got it. But call it June, 2017 last year, maybe doing 20 K then you have hundred percent year over year growth. So now today you're doing about 40 grand per month and you think you're going to grow that to how much by the end of the year? Um, so by the end of the year, uh, probably around we're, we're looking to, uh, 70, 80 K. Okay. And, and how are you growing? Where are you getting these new customers from? Yeah. So a lot of, we get a lot of word of mouth to be completely honest, uh, account managers at ad networks themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, we've even had a Facebook rep represent us, recommend us because, um, you know, at the end of the day, media buyers spend less money because they run out of time. Um, you know, usually that's a, one of the, the limits of scaling is you either have to hire people, um, or find technology so you can create more campaigns and spend more. That's right. Now, now that growth sounds great. If you can obviously keep adding customers, but you also have to keep your current customers. What's your churn look like today? Sure. So we look at churn on kind of two different, uh, well, a couple different aspects, but the, the main way we break it out is, uh, monthly versus annual customers. So monthly we see, um, about 4% churn and then annual it's revenue. It's net negative. Um, logo it's about, you know, 1% or less. Got it. How, how net negative or asked differently? What, what, uh, what's your revenue retention, your net revenue retention annually? Do you know? Um, I don't know like exactly. So we changed, so we, uh, we changed our pricing. Let me say it that way. Um, so for most people it's, uh, an increase, Got it. Uh, you know, anywhere from a hundred dollars to 
sometimes devil. I mean, that's a, a hard conversation to have sometimes, but yep. usually the additional stuff they're going to get offsets it. Yep. And where is most of the growth coming from in terms of, well, you said it's word of mouth. Are you doing any direct paid spend yourself? And if so, what's your CAC look like today? Sure. So we just started uh, actually direct spend this month. Um, so I don't have a that for you. We have looked at it in the bat past just based on uh, salaries of people working yeah, on fully, marketing. fully yeah. weighted. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when we look at that, it's, um, you know, we kind of look at payback period more than lifetime value since we're so young. And so that's about one and a half months. Okay. So that's, uh, that means you're spending about 600 bucks to acquire the customer if they're paying 400 bucks a month. Yeah. To give or take. So some of the self-serve we get for less than that, some of the, but that's what it averages out to about. Okay. I love that you bring that up and that, you know, you're so young, you look at payback period, you know, a lot of young companies, they tend to focus on the, the sexier metric, which is LTV to CAC ratio. The problem with that is you put yourself in a, in a cash gap, obviously, right? Cause you can have a very healthy, people don't realize this. You can have a very healthy lifetime value to CAC ratio. Let's say a customer's worth a thousand bucks to you. You only paid 10. The problem is if they're only paying you I'm making this up a dollar a month. It takes you a hundred months, right? Or a thousand months to get that thousand dollars of lifetime value, which is why payback period is a much better indicator. And, and from an operational perspective for young companies. So this is a great payback period being 1.5 months. Yeah. Exactly. And another thing on that, I think that people mess up with LTV. So like, I'll give a good example. I think it was like eight months or something before we ever had a customer churn. Mm -hmm. And so when you, if, if you look at the formula, I like, well, LTV is unlimited until you have yeah. churn. Right. And I'm like, well, that's not real. I was like, yeah. look, we're not state farm here with 20 years of data to, to make a prediction. I was like, you need at least five years to stay there before you start making those predictions. Yeah. Lifetime, lifetime value is also, I think a dangerous metric, uh, because of what you just articulated. People tend to just divide by churn and then extrapolate. And they assume a lifetime value of like infinity. The, the, <laughs> the truth about lifetime value, in my opinion, is it's a general soft indicator, but it's a very weak indicator because look, if you have a lifetime value of anything more than two years, true or false mark, you know, in the next 12 to 18 months, something's going to come into your industry that you didn't know about. And you're going to have to adapt on the fly. Absolutely. Yeah. Every six months. <laughs> yeah. So that, that could, that could quadruple your LTV or put you out of business. Right. I mean, potential, I'm making that up, but worst case put you out of it. You just don't know. So lifetime value, I think is always an interesting conversation. Um, tell me more about some of the, uh, the, um, uh, the team size. What, what are you guys at today? Sure. So we're actually a really small team. Uh, so employees were three, mm -hmm. um, which is great. We do have contractors for some stuff. Uh, we were larger, but we just scaled down. It wasn't necessary. It was one of those, like we kind of took the Silicon Valley ethos of like hire people and you can grow faster. And that proved to be false in our scenario. Um, we actually grew faster as we cut back. Um, why was that? Is it because you, when you hired people, they just weren't talented or you put them on the wrong tasks or you don't know what your growth drivers are? Uh, I think it's a, a few things. So one, um, you know, I still think even today with where we're at, I still think we're doing a little bit of, you know, helicopter circling to find product market fit. You know, I don't put us in that. We found it category. Um, you know, when we're doing a hundred K MRR, I'll probably feel a little bit more confident about that. But sure. until at least to that point, like in my opinion, you just haven't found it before that point. You know, we certainly have traction. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that, so that's part of it is, you know, we hadn't, you know, it, it, it's been about a year, a little less. Um, so we've definitely done better on our product uh, where we fit in the market standpoint and, and developed a little bit more in there. I think the other piece was, um, we did go a little bit more. We didn't necessarily, so it, it, part of it's people too, and not necessarily, but, but like sometimes we, you know, I think part of it is you're spending so much time managing people when maybe you're actually the best person to execute on it. And when you're really young, you know, you want to stop doing things as, at least in my opinion, what we try to do is like take us as the founders out of a picture. And maybe it was just a little too early for us being that we're bootstrapped. I think if we had taken, you're still, time, you're still bootstrapped today. Correct. Yeah. I mean, look, the problem with like what you're just articulating is as the founder, you will always be the best person to execute every task. So like the trick is like, how do you find two people that are 70% as good as you? Right. Uh, and, but, but together they're 140% of your output. Yeah. I mean, so it, it was just tricky. I mean, I think a lot of the time was just getting spent on 
on training and because we're in a very technical industry, there's not a lot of people. So I think a lot of it was just, we had to dedicate more time to training versus just executing. Yep. Um, And what year, Mark, when did you launch the company? What year? uh, 2015. 2015. Very good. All right. Um, let's, uh, and by the way, the team says, are they remote or are they all based there with you? Uh, so, well, we're all remote now. We actually, uh, we all, we went completely remote in the last, uh, six months. Okay, great, great. All right. Good stuff, Mark. Let's, uh, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, so mine, I don't know if it qualifies as a business book, but it's the one I recommend. It's kind of a life book is, uh, Wooden, the life and times of John Wooden, the UCLA basketball coach. Number two, if, by, by the way, bios are great for that kind of thing. Uh, number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, yeah. So I, I follow Ray Dalio really close. Um, I don't know if that's too mainstream for you, but I, you know, that's the only one I could give you. And good. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a business? Ooh, that one's a little bit tougher. Um, I'm going to go, I really love Typeform because I just think the way I think lead generation is kind of key and they make the way to do that. Like the best I've seen. That's great. And guys, if you want to hear from David, who's the CEO of Typeform, he was on about two weeks ago and articulated that they've passed 19 million bucks in ARR and they process over 50 million forms per month from over 40,000 paying customers. So Jonathan, or sorry, Mark, you're in good company there. A lot of people loving Typeform. Uh, and number three, how many hours of sleep are you, or sorry, number four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? Uh, I usually get seven hours. Okay. That's good. And what's your situation? Married, single kids? I'm married with two kids. Two. And how old are you? 36. 36. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Uh, I would tell my 20 year old self, uh, publish your work, be patient and be confident. Guys, publish your work and then be patient to be confident. Things will come around again. Found at Brax.io back in 2015, helping folks, uh, performance markers get better performance right back out of their ad spend. Each customer paying on average 400 bucks per month. They have currently about 92 customers. So they're doing about 40 grand per month right now in sales. That's double year over year from June, 2017 last year when they were doing about 20 grand per month in sales. Today, they're about 4% logo churn per month, but revenue is net negative on an annual basis, which is obviously a great thing. They're spending about six dollars on a fully weighted CAC. So payback created about 1.5 months with their team of three based in remote locations all around the country. Again, founded in 2015. Mark, thank you for taking us to the top. All right. Thank you, Nathan.